So, yeah. We have some news for you guys, too. You want to tell them on you? <laughs> that uh, you want to tell them? Um, we found out some news yesterday um, that Gianna is currently, we are currently six weeks pregnant and expecting. Um, we weren't expecting it, I guess you can say, no pun intended, but, but yeah, so, in Russian. We knew that the best decision for us was to have the baby here at home. Even though I kind of went back and forth in my mind, like, you know, Kyle, I can really do it. I can have a baby in Russia. I can have the baby in Russia. He's like, no, it's best for you to be home because you have the support system. You have your mom, you have your family, you have friends, you know, you're in a house that's comfortable. But I think the biggest thing is always having, or not having Kyle around. I think that's like the, the biggest absence of them all. And, um, you know, you kind of get used to, with us, and especially for the past year and a half, two years, with the amount of transitions that we've gone through, from getting married, to me moving overseas with him, to finding out we were pregnant literally within weeks of me moving over there, to being pregnant, to having a baby, um, you get used to either being together or you get used to not being together. And, you know, we always try to mentally prepare ourselves for that, you know, kind of like that two week period where it's the week before we leave and the week after we leave, where those are probably the toughest times. And, you know, instead of focusing on a lot of the negative things, not having him around, not um, us not being around, it's mainly just focusing on the things that we can control. You know, having those morning conversations, making sure that you, we say goodnight to each other, making sure that he's a part of bath time when he's up that late. You know, those are the certain situations that we try to control and that he can still be a part of, whether we're here at home or whether, you know, we're in Russia. When my family was leaving, it was definitely, um, it was definitely difficult, um, especially, you know, dropping them off at the airport. My wife started crying, <laughs> my mom started crying, and my sister started crying. So, you know, I was just trying to be, um, you know, strong for both of them and just trying not to really show my emotions because I knew they were definitely going to be emotional. Um, you know, being away from my wife and my daughter and, you know, having my mom and my sister here for almost two weeks. And, you know, my wife, she was here for almost, you know, I think two months and we weren't going to see each other for almost seven weeks. So I think it was definitely, you know, difficult for her to leave because she's grown such, you know, comfortable being here in Moscow being here in Russia, it was definitely difficult for her to leave and for me not to be able to be with her during the, the last part of her pregnancy. And it was hard for me just not having them there. You know, I'm so used to having, you know, action going on, you know, in my house, especially when you have kids, there's always something going on. There's always, you know, something, somebody doing something or something going on. So to continuously come home to an empty house definitely was, uh, you know, I wasn't used to it. But um, I knew that, you know, that we were, she was going home with a purpose. She was going home to wait to give birth to our son. So. From that standpoint, um, you know, I was sad, but I was also, you know, kind of happy because, you know, I was in, anticipating the, the birth of our, of our son. I had plans, I was working out, I was like trying to get my snap back on, and it caught us by surprise as much as a pregnancy can catch you by surprise. And then once we calculated the due date, we were like, like crap, it's right in smack dab in the middle of the season. We didn't have the schedule for this season yet. We didn't know what we were gonna expect or come across once the schedule came out. But we were like, crap, it's in the middle of the season. Like, this is gonna be impossible. The plan is, um, I'm, I'm, first, first of all, I'm very fortunate and very lucky to play for a team and a club that's very understanding. Um, you know, they put, one of the, I think, the main things, Jessica, is that they kind of put family first. So I asked the coach roughly, probably maybe, you know, probably a month ago, that, um, you know, that my wife was obviously, he knew that my wife was going home to give birth. And I told him that, you know, I wanted to go home for the birth. Um, and he said it was no question that you would, you know, that, that we would allow you, we would give you permission to go home. The same with, you know, I talked to, uh, you know, Natasha, um, the vice president and our president, Mr. Ratun, 
Um, they said, it, you know, it was no question that you would have the ability to go home. So um, they're going to allow me to go home and I'll have the opportunity to go home for three days to see the birth. Um, right now she's due January 5th, um, January 6th actually, she's due January 6th. Um, we have a game January 4th, so I'm going to fly straight after our game in Barcelona and fly straight to Philadelphia to be there um, for the birth on January 6th, stay there for two days and then come back and then, uh, you know, continue the season back here in Moscow. Having a boy, I just don't know what to expect. You always have people in your ear saying boys are crazier, they're just the more energetic, you know, you're going to have a harder time with boys. Um, but honestly, if, if, if our son is, is like Kyle, I feel like we'll have the easiest time ever. To tell you the truth, because, you know, everybody knows, like, Kyle's so laid back, he's so chill. And if he takes on his dad's personality, I'm like, listen, I'll probably have an easier time with him than I did with Anya. Um, we tried to talk about every scenario, um, you know, before we were talking about maybe trying to change the flight on the fly and, and, and trying to, you know, find different scenarios of what would happen. We decided that if that was the case, that, um, that I would just try to watch it on FaceTime. Um, you know, my wife, she has, you know, all the, I guess you say the team, the team managers and the sport directors, uh, numbers. And so if I'm in practice or anything like that, you know, she's going to give them a call and let them know the situation, let them know what, you know, what's happening. So that's pretty much going to be it. You know I me, mean? hopefully we're not in the air, we're not traveling or anything like that. And I can get opportunity to be home here, um, and watch it on FaceTime and kind of be with her and kind of enjoy that moment with her. But we're crossing our fingers, hopefully and it doesn't happen. Hopefully that, you know, I'll have the opportunity to be there. I'll have the opportunity to, you know, see see them and, and witness the birth. So by God graces, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If it's not, then we'll figure it out. We didn't realize how much of a blessing it was going to be, but, you know, the baby's due date is right around the holidays. You know, right around the holidays where families come together, friends come together, people come and visit, people have time off from work. You know, so it actually worked out in our favor to where we have people that can come over and stay with us and have time off and they come and check on us. So it's been a, a tremendous help from my mom who's been here literally every single day um, to Tatiana who had break from college. Like that's been a huge help because she's been over here. Kyle, Kyle's brother, Tyler, you know, Ron, Mike, Amaris, like I can name everybody who has been over here just to kind of help out and just the Johnsons, like Alicia and Dube and Dallas, they come down here and literally they just entertain Anya for the entire weekend. And it's just great because they know that one, I need the help, I need the rest. And two, you know, Anya's kind of that person that brings people around. So, um, we didn't know that it was going to be like this. You know, we always, we thought about the negative, like, it's in the middle of the season. How is Kyle going to get home? But then on the flip side of it, it's been like the perfect timing to where family and friends come over and they stop over. So it's been a wonderful five weeks just having people come over. And at this point, I don't mind at all. I'm like, come over, help, take out the trash, wash some dishes, fold some clothes, come eat. Um, it's been fun. It really has. It really has. Oh, Christmas morning was great. The first thing I did when I got home, before I even unpacked my bags, was put up a Christmas tree. I got pajamas and we cooked breakfast for everybody. And it was basically because this was Anya's first Christmas at home. This was going to be the first Christmas that she was not necessarily going to remember, but she was going to be able to participate in. So I took it pretty seriously. Anya's face lit up and everybody was around the Christmas tree opening up gifts, singing songs, you know, just being goofy. And I think that's really it's what it's about is just having family come together. And for me, honestly, at this point in time, it's family coming together, eating great food and just having great company and sharing a lot of laughs. So that's exactly what it was. Um, 
Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another blessing. We thank you for an amazing holiday with family and friends. We thank you for bringing us together, you know, for a special child, Anya. It's her first uh, Christmas home in the States. So, uh, you know, thank you for the food that we're about to eat. Thank you for the hands that prepared it. You know, bless you know, Gianna with a baby that's coming in the next uh, few weeks. And uh, you know, let us uh, enjoy our day and, you know, but us also look over Kyle while he's over in Russia doing his thing. Yes. You know, thank you for allowing us to you know, hold him hold down in the fourth for him and uh, do what we have to do and uh, keep moving. Amen. 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 It's not easy sitting here on Christmas Day and watching Home Alone or, or watching, you know, these Christmas shows and different things and then teammates coming in the locker room and Talking about you know how their kids were when they were opening up gifts and presents is 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 difficult, but it's part of the sacrifice. I've done what I needed to do during this pregnancy to make sure that I'm healthy, I'm fit, um, I'm a, I'm in a great mental space. I'm still having a great time. I think it's very important to enjoy your pregnancy uh, personally as well as with your family and friends, and I think all of that kind of leads up to a a great experience birthing your child. So, I mean, with seven days left, I'm just like, let's go seven days. You know, I'm planning them out. Like I got New Year's, which I'm probably not gonna do anything. My birthday, probably just gonna get a manicure, pedicure, eat some red lobster biscuits, keep it moving. And really just prepare for, it's really about preparing for Kyle's arrival. Cause once he gets here, it's one of those things where it's just like, all of this weight kind of just, is all off my shoulders, you know, because I feel as though him not being here and potentially having to go through this labor experience without him, um, I'm kind of in the position where I kind of need to kind of figure out things, like call people and make plans and things of that nature. But having him here, like, all of that goes away because he just handles, like, he handles it all. He handled it last time. You know, he came in 48 hours before I went into labor. I could barely open my eyes when I was having contractions. And all I remember is like his feet just pitter pattering up and down the stairs, getting everything together. I don't even think he knew where everything was, but he got it together and he handled it. Like he called people, everything was set. So I know that once he gets here, once he lands, once he's in America, once he's in New Jersey, all I have to do is have the baby and everything else is taken care of. So that's a it's a great feeling. It is a great feeling. Happy New Year from Moscow, Russia. Um, the New Year, I'm going to my teammates um, along with their wives and significant others. They're going out to you know have some dinner um, at one of this this really really nice restaurant. Um, so I'm gonna go join them. Um, I, I told them initially I didn't want to go because I didn't want to be like the fifth or sixth wheel. I didn't want to be that, you know, <laughs> the one guy sitting at the end of the table and everybody's, all, you know, all coupled up. But um, I have a good relationship with all of them. So, I mean, I thought it'd be cool just to go out and spend some time with them, get some laughs and just kind of let loose a little bit. You know, during this period, especially around this period, you know, we're so focused on, you know, basketball, so focused on our craft that it's important for us to kind of, you know, be able to unwind a little bit and enjoy the holidays and enjoy New Year's and, um, you know, enjoy, you know, having, you know, some champagne and, you know, a little bit of good food and some good time. So that's my plan. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New With what we we Half have like a hour. with a big peanut ball. Mm -hmm. It is really good with epidurals. Yes, to just kind of help the to coax the baby to come down and turn on his own. Mm -hmm. 
because right now you're pushing great, but it's a little ineffective just because of the way the baby's positioned. Oh, okay. So I think, and I try, you know, I tried to kind of manually turn him, but sometimes they just like to do it on their own. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay? okay. And that way that'll save you some energy. There's, listen, there's no, <sighs> no rush. We're going to do, yeah, we're going to put the baby on his side. On his this, side. This big, like, yoga she, we're going to put okay. Gianna okay. on his side okay. so the baby okay. will naturally okay. turn okay. for okay. about a half an hour. Okay. And then we're going to try to push He's again. Facing. Okay. Okay, but she's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Officially afternoon baby. Yep. <laughs> she checked on me downstairs. I was six, and then when she, okay. when um, Dr. Ricci checked on me first time up here, I was ten. Okay. We had Italian, right? Yeah. It might have been the tomato sauce. Mm-hmm. I had a gnocchi filled with pesto. Um, and uh, it was delicious and bacon wrapped scallops from Luna Rosa. That's probably what did it. But honestly, I had fallen asleep on the couch and I had woken up because I felt like I was going through contractions. I was like, no, it's a dream. And then no, I felt, I was like, I feel something different. So I was like, let me go upstairs. And I went upstairs and went to sleep. And I would say around 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, um, I woke up and I started to feel you know, contractions. And I was like, this feels a very similar to what I went experienced with Anya. I'm like, no, I gotta wait till Friday. I gotta wait till Friday. But then, um, you know, they started coming on pretty quickly and I was like, I think something is gonna happen. And honestly, my mom was supposed to go back to New York today to go check on her cats. And she was like, I'm gonna be out of the house by seven, go up, drive back, you'll be fine. I was like, yeah, yeah I'll be fine. And I, when I knocked on the door, I said, I said, Mommy, you're not going anywhere. Well, not, hurry up. Get in the car. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad I started early at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Something told me, just let's get out of bed. Let's get showered. Let's go. Let's go, right? Yeah. So here we are. Mm-hmm. I said, I think something's happening. And um, the contractions at that point were pretty close together. And I called Kyle, and Kyle's like, oh, you're fine. He was like, last time you weren't even able to talk through, through contractions. He's like, so you're good. It was probably like, you know, Braxton Hicks or just early early stages of labor. You're, you'll make it to Friday. And um, I was like, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I called him back, and I said, yeah, so the hospital told me to come in. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. All right, all right, so who, who, who should we call? And basically that's kind of how it happened. Um, got my epidural, so I'm hanging out, and we're gonna start pushing soon. And hopefully meet the little one. How you feeling? <laughs> nervous? Nervous. I'll tell you on what you're going to tell her what your time is. Okay. Whenever you feel I mean, yeah. We're going to have to turn this off. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you. 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 Oh, you're home now? Yeah, I came. I just came home. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you want to talk to her? No. No. Yeah. Oh, you still worried about angles and moving in a good place? Yeah, I, the epidural is wearing off a little bit, so I'm starting to feel the pressure. But we're gonna we're gonna keep it that way. Hey, Kyle. Hey Kyle, hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> yeah. And this is Abby. It's Abby. Hi. Abby. She's my, how are you? my partner. Hi, nice to meet you. Good, good, good. Take good care of her. We're watching your docu-series on TV. We love it. Your docu-series. Talking to a celebrity. Yeah, we're, we're, we're using it to channel inspiration and motivation. Nice, nice. Oh, we're at Rabat. Are you doing okay. feeling more pressure, you think? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I start to do the I start to yeah. party in here. <laughs> again? Part two. Oh, yeah. Part two. Yeah, All I right. didn't press the, the button again because I feel like that would help me push. Yeah, let's see how we do. Okay, okay. let's see if this baby okay. turns. Okay. I'm going to push okay. it in. Cool. Let's play. Let's play. You're jogging up and down the hallway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Alright. So when you start feeling that pressure, start the contraction. Three, two, three. Good. Mm. Push, Push those bones down. All the way back. All the way back. Seven, Seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. Deep breath. A little bit more, a little bit more. Come on, guys. There you go. That's that. Yes. That was a nice. great one. Nice deep breath in. Good. I'm gonna just give you one more breath. Just one more breath. Nice deep breath in. Good. And push. One, two, three. Push. Do it. Do it. Three, four, five, six. Get it. Get it. Push it out. Push it out. Nine, ten. Go wait for a contraction. Okay. All right. Get your other side. You gotta wait for a contraction, Kyle. Okay. You are doing so good. Right. I still want that red lobster tomorrow. No, no. Shut up. One, two, three, four, five. Justin, too. Daddy, it's your decision. Oh. Oh. Justin, it is. Justin. Perfect set. What's his name? It's mama. It's mama. feeling a very huge sense of accomplishment to tell you the truth and um, very overwhelmed but totally in love with this little person and, um, I don't know giving birth is unexplainable and you're just overcome with emotion once the baby's here and in your arms but he's perfect he's perfect Justin's perfect It happened so fast. Becoming a family of four happened so fast. And nobody can plan and nobody can tell you how to, like, what the blueprint is to raise your family, you know? Um, we have a great system in place. And I think that's what's important. Like, we, we built a, a great foundation going into being parents, which has been such an amazing journey, especially with Kyle, because he's he's like the best father ever. You know, my mom says it all the time. She's like, you have the greatest guy ever. And I'm like, I do. I really do. Um, he's waking her up in the morning. He's feeding her. He's motivating me to go to the gym. He's putting her down for naps. He's like, go and take a shower, relax. I got this. He's coming in right from practice and giving her baths. Sometimes he sacrifices his naps just so that I can do what I need to do to, and he'll watch Anya for that time. So, you know, as far as transitioning from a family of three to a family of four, I feel like it's not going to be that difficult. Even when I talk about going back overseas and our apartment not being able to accommodate, you know, a toddler and an infant, um, he's just like, you know what, we'll make it work. 
And that's kind of the mentality that he's always had. And it's been so important for us to have him as kind of like our, our leader of our family because he's always just so positive about any change that, that happens or any difficult situation um, and any distances that we might face along the way with me going home. He's just like, gee, you got this. Like, I know you got this. Don't worry, the time is going to go fast. Five weeks, six weeks, the time is going to go fast, and then we'll be together again. And then he's like, I know I have to go back, but guess what? The next two and a half months are going to be back, are going to go fast, and you'll be back in Russia before you know it, and then we'll figure it out. And that's been so important. Um, so I think, like, honestly, for from the family of three to a family of four, it's going to be ten times the amount of fun. It's going to be ten times the amount of craziness. But I wouldn't choose this path or this adventure with anybody else besides him and Anya and our little baby boy. So I'm looking forward to it.